Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Eric Drazen from Oakland Tobacconist to give you guys a look inside the community that voted Liga Zebra the number one cigar of the year, and you're watching Cigars Daily. Help us future-proof Cigars Daily by watching this video on CigarsDailyPlus.com where you can find stuff like coupon codes and extra content and videos because we're always working to make it better on Cigars Daily Plus. And obviously for this video, we're smoking the Liga Zebra from American Viking Cigars. This is a blend that I had an idea for years before we started Cigars Daily okay. and just kind of was always waiting to put it out. When I finally got the chance to do this here, I was so excited about having a barber pole with a classy zebra on it. Did did not count on the popularity this thing would it would get and your community the oak glen society to oak glen tobacco society has what's the full name ogt uh, cigar society ogt cigar mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. you guys voted this the number one cigar of 2021 among your community and i've said this before and i want to hear from you on this but i've said this before that that means 10 times more to me than hitting the big lists like the cigar aficionado list or the other panel driven list right, like right. a group of cigar smokers said they like this cigar so much uh that they put it at the top of the list yes. how the hell did that happen so essentially <laughs> yeah well what we do is it's a very organic list so i have no more influence over the voting than the next guy who just puts in a ballot. So we create a, a like an official physical ballot okay. that people fill out their top three cigars. Yes. Each category, one, two, three, is worth a certain amount of points. You put it all on a spreadsheet, and this is all someone who either have ordered from us online or come into our shop. So it's got to come through the OGT humidor. Wow. And out of all those SKUs, tallying it all up, Liga Zebra was out in front by a long, long margin. That's incredible. And it, tell me, so you, you've you got a, a lot of really unique, interesting, and good brands in mm -hmm. your humidor, not just the little stuff, the big guys as well. How does this, how does a cigar like this get noticed? Like American Viking typically isn't on the tip of people's tongues unless they're watching you know, Cigars Daily or they're part of Cigars right, Daily Nation. Right. So how do people in your shop get introduced to brands like this? So I think one is, one of the strengths as far as an eye-catching strength everyone always gives the label a big huge compliment the classy zebra is is pretty iconic on top of that for the longest time it's our only barber pole in the entire humidor that's because I, a lot of people like myself who smoke barber poles unfortunately when you're dealing with those like dual wraps mm -hmm. you have a very uneven burn yeah. you have draw issues Liga zebra is not in that category it's a barber pole of its own i want i wonder why more brands aren't doing bar, like regular production barber poles. I don't see a ton of them. And I wonder if it's because of construction issues. Mm. I wonder if it's because of the cost, because this is not the most expensive Viking cigar, but it is the most expensive one to make. Really? It's actually our smallest margin cigar out there. Okay. But again, this is one we're really proud of. And the band, you said this one gets a lot of like praise from people. This was a crowdsourced band that members of the Cigars nice. Daily Nation actually voted on and picked out themselves. Crowdsourced band, crowdsourced number one cigar. Absolutely, man. <laughs> That's fantastic. So yeah, and then honestly, it's a really good like... I, I think a lot of people have that, like, you can't make a cigar for everyone, right? Everyone's palate's different. However, Liga Zebra is close to fitting the margin of, I'm a veteran smoker, I like stronger things. Because of the unique flavors, like the creaminess, the banana nut creaminess that comes from it, it's got so much flavor going on, it still satisfies the heavier smoker. Hell yeah. And it's also accessible to people who are just getting into it. It's so weird because when we did American Viking, I was intentionally like, all right, the, the, the Filthy Viking will probably be our most mild cigar, but it wasn't. Like this one is that mild, more mild creamy, but it, mm -hmm. I think that if I could, if I could compare it to another cigar, the Perdomo 10 year champagne. Okay. Because, okay. And, and not that it's the same flavor profile, but right. it does carry this nice, rich nicotine strength that that champagne does. does. That's what the champagne has that other cigars don't. It's a mild Connecticut that's full bodied and full flavored, but it's got a punch of nicotine to get a nice buzz off of. This one will give you a similar experience, I think. Okay, I'm gonna also say this has more going on in Arizona than it does at our altitude. And I'm saying as far as that nicotine In terms content, of flavor. In terms of like nicotine content. Like I would put this, smoking it here, being used to smoking at higher elevations, like edging to a medium. Hmm. Whereas up at the shop, it's, it's a very smooth, mild, because we're at 4,800 feet. 
Yes. So I so I did a video on on altitude and cigars and flavor and stuff a while ago, and I have noticed that like yeah. the place that I go up to up north is about forty five hundred feet, and cigars okay. do tend to calm down, smooth mm-hmm. out a little bit. Mm-hmm. The blend on this thing is uh, a Maduro and Connecticut wrapper. Okay. It's got the Honduran binder and fillers from Honduras and the Dominican Republic. Okay. So this cigar sort of violates today's rules that you got to sort of be Nicaraguan to be sexy and cool. Right. Like <laughs> like it it really does produce but, a lot of flavor without any Nicaraguan leaf. And that's a question I would have for you. Being being that I mean you've been at this for so long, have you noticed an upsurge in Honduran tobacco? Like a lot more Honduras cigars coming out that are smokable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that are smokable. <laughs> I, you know, yes, and I think that has to do with a with an increase in solid Honduran brands. Okay. You know, I you know this guys like Oscar Valderez, yes, who's all Honduran, like mm-hmm. he's for leave making cigars in Honduras. Uh, Leaf by Oscar from the same guy. Right. Alec Bradley uses a lot of Honduran tobaccos, and they're doing really, really well right now. So I think that the more of these brands in Honduras, obviously Placencia has mm-hmm. factories in Honduras. They grow a lot of Honduran tobacco. So, yeah, the availability of it and putting it into cigars that really work makes a lot of sense. And I do think it's growing. I think that, Yeah. And yeah. I think there's a, a character to this. Yes. And, and, and I'm curious about this from you. As another cigar shop owner, mm-hmm. do you find that tobaccos of different regions, of different countries, come with different general characteristics? Yes. Like people say Nicaraguan tobacco is a little, you know, stronger, even spicier, mm-hmm. and Honduran tobacco tends to be earthier and sweeter. Right. What do you see in that? I would say for, at least through my only personal experience, and that's what I can talk on, not as this is fact, this is the Bible. But essentially, when it comes to it, Nicaragua for me has that richness. I mean, you have the higher volcanic soil, so you have also where it's located in region, you have the direct sunlight, so it's rich. It's when you talk about fuller bodied cigars, it seems like it's more rare to find that in Dominican than you will find it in Nicaragua. You know, it's it's a, a thing that I hear a lot of accusation for Dominican tobacco, like that it just doesn't have the character that a lot of others do. But even now, you mentioned Honduras coming up as a country that's like, oh yeah, you see more Honduran. I actually right. see a lot more Dominican stuff okay. popping up these okay. days as well. You got brands like Caldwell and La Barba that are doing really well using Dominican leaf. Yeah. And then I'm going through blending information as we create new products on the website, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot more Dominican leaf in a lot of okay. this stuff. So I, yeah. Maybe some of it's the shortage of tobacco this year and people are grabbing more. True. Well, no, these are existing. I, I see a lot of Dominican, like, stronger cigars using a uh, San Andreas wrapper. Yeah. Due to availability, due to price, all those, like, things play in. And you have the punch of the San Andreas wrapper with Dominican fillers. I think brand like Casa Cuevas, great brand. Yes. That is where a customer is asking, hey, I want something that's Maduro but not, not very peppery. I want oh, yeah. sweeter and such. That's where... Yeah. Dominican place, and there's a, there's a huge huge need for that. Yes. Now let me yes. ask you about the Oak Glen Tobacconist Cigar Society. Mm. You know the the group of people that picked this as the top cigar. You had other cigars on the top list. What other brands made it in? I know there was another. Uh, the Filthy Viking Lancero was on what, that number list. two. Number two. <laughs> yes. Number so, one and so number definitely, two. Definitely. Now I will also say this with the Zebra. I think a huge contributing factor too is price, especially in California. Mm-hmm. When you're dealing with the California tax and the, the situation that it is. Liga Zebra, the smoke quality. Tell, tell people real quick what the tax is on cigars it's, in California. It's sixty four percent. So if you if you are going to buy, let's say, uh, as it kind of marches out to, let's say you sell a cigar for ten bucks. Yep. In California, my shop, it has to be about thirteen twenty five. Is that crazy? That So I think this is the thing a lot of people don't catch. And I want to go back to your cigar society. Yeah. A lot of people don't catch. Every state has a different tobacco tax. Mm-hmm. You know, in Texas, it's one penny. In, in your state, it's 64%. New York is similar to California. 75%. It's, it's 75%? Oh, 75. But then you get to some states where it's like Minnesota, I think, is 90%, but with a 50-cent cap. Right. So having a cap is what I would love for California to do. That would be awesome. Except awesome. in California, the cap would be three thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for real, for real. So, so what other brands make it onto your top list in a, in a you know collective cigar society of discerning cigar smokers? So, some of the other ones that we really saw number three, which is a big brand at our shop, is Black Label Trading Company. Uh-huh. Salvation, they did really well. Another one, which is a no brainer, is uh, the Tabernacle Havana Seed, which fantastic cigar. I wish it was more available, but a fantastic cigar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
You know, I, 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 my heart goes out to cigar makers like Nick Malilo, who, uh, who is getting his stuff made in a sensational way. The quality is always there. Yes. But, you know, a lot of these factories are pulling back and be like, hey, we're going to roll our own stuff first, so your stuff kind of takes second keel. Right, you know, to a lot right, of these guys right. that are that are camping out in other factories. And, you know, Nick is doing a great job managing the need, but the Tabernacle, I've heard, is going to be in some limited supply for a, for a while. Yes, yes. Now, and that also harkens back to American Viking in the sense that, I mean, here you start on the boutique side, and now consecutively, and again, I have no influence over this, it won Cigar of the Year at our shop last year and this year. Last year was the Dama Velada, and your guys' supply, like supply for ordering, is top-notch, which is something you can always guarantee on. So that's a huge plus as a cigar shop owner to know, hey, we need the product, it's going to be here. Wow. Yeah. You didn't. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> and I, I think it's great being on this side of the country to be able to supply. And, you know, it takes five days for stuff to get from Miami. Right. Maybe even longer for you. Right. You're an extra right. state away. Yeah. So I, you know, yeah, I like that. And I like having a brand where you can get a hold of stuff. And we're actually even seeing some stuff. We're waiting till probably April to get in. A couple of SKUs of Rico Barato and whatnot. But uh, it's fantastic. So you said there's a few other really good brands. You mentioned Aladino. You mentioned Black mm-hmm. Label. You've also brought in some new brands to your humidor, which you we guys have. can find uh, Oakland Tobacconist online. And if you're in California or you're on the west side of the country, I would mm-hmm. say check them out because great shop with amazing value that goes on there. I don't often talk about other online retailers. And in I fact, I would say it. I never do that. <laughs> but I really, really like and respect Eric. You're talking about a guy with a high moral caliber uh, who you can trust with your business. And that's something that I find tremendous value in. That's like the highest value in this business. Well, and I appreciate it. And really, we... Uh, we more, our humidor is geared around more of the boutique side, high quality side in the sense of like craft. Because unfortunately in this day and age, in this cigar boom that we're here now, everyone and their mom has a cigar brand that they're launching, yes. it seems like. Yes. And unfortunately the quality is not always there. Right. So we really try to find, I mean, we kind of coined the phrase of it, where the hard to find is within reach. And that's a lot of Provada Cigar Club LCA stuff. There's a lot of, uh, there's a new brand, fantastic, called Black Star Line. Mm -hmm. They make fantastic blends. Some of their tobaccos used from Aganorsa. Some of them from uh, uh, Titan LeBrons with uh, Dominican. So really high quality stuff. Fantastic. Titan LeBrons is one of the most famous cigar factories of all time. Mm -hmm. Incredible Mm -hmm. leaf there. Okay, so when we originally were bringing a lot of brands into the shop and kind of refining the humidor, American Viking was one of the first. And so you have a lineup of a like wide variety of mild and creamy, which you have the Viking at there. You have the Dama Velada, which is like a play between sweet and spice to it. Um, and of course your barber pole. What is coming next for American Viking? <laughs> You know, uh, American Viking is... And every manufacturer loves that question. Every manufacturer <laughs> loves that question. This year, I, I've got the same answer as a lot of manufacturers. Not a tremendous amount. Like, we've, we've had a few conversations about a new blend for American Viking. But, you know, like a lot of boutique brands, and here's the issue. American Viking is not vertically integrated. A factory makes our cigars for us. We get the tobacco from that factory. So they have the right. tobacco. They, they actually have the bands. They have everything. So we literally put in orders with our factory, and they make our cigars for us that we blend it in conjunction with them. And so even there, I've been given extended wait times to get product this year because Mm. they're rolling their own stuff first. And so they should. And they have other customers, many other customers who are a lot bigger than American Viking. So we're normally it takes, you know, about 90 days to get cigars made. We're looking at an extra month in production. So it's four month production time right now. And then if like, if you get to the point where you need boxes and bands, Forget about it. Like the yeah, the, yeah. the cigar band company, if you order anything less than like a million cigar cigar rings right now, they're like, oh yeah, it's gonna be like you know months and months of waiting, and it might even be another four months. So doing something like that, you're talking about a six month lead time just to get something done. I don't know that we've made big plans like that, and I'm watching a lot of other brands who are really just protecting their catalog right now. And I, like, uh, uh, I'll me- I'll mention this uh, one really big brand. You and I both carry this brand. Uh, they have limited their, I don't, I won't say the name cause I don't know if they want people to know this, but <laughs> they've limited the production of their catalog to just their most popular stuff. 
So they've said these wow. five or six lines of cigars are our best selling stuff. So we're going to make these and we're not going to make anything else. Okay. And so while, I mean, and that's a brand that owns their own, talking about. that's a brand that owns their own factory too, right? Yeah, They've got yeah. their own factory and they're mm-hmm. like, we can't even roll our own entire catalog. And so, Crazy. you know, rather than put the strain and stress of, on ourselves of like, can we even accomplish something like this? Mm-hmm. We've actually invested more this year in what would a collaboration look like with another brand? We've actually okay. had a couple brands reach out to us about it. And whether those will be American Viking uh, collabs or Cigars Daily collabs, we're not entirely sure that yet. That would like, be we're, awesome. Yeah. We're, yes. we're ta- we're, I'm talking about a Cigars Daily collab with a brand I think people will be really excited about. Okay. It'll be like okay. the boxes will be gone in 90 minutes. Time right, right, right. So, anyway, nice. excited about that. So tell me this. For you, for Oakland Tobacconists and the Oakland Tobacconist Cigar Society, what's sort of the next? What's on the horizon for you guys? You continue to grow. People continue to join your society because mm-hmm. it's such a great community. We actually people. we had to close off spots. We're sold out wow. right now. And we're, we're working really hard to open that up. But the reason that is is because what we're sourcing for the society is something either that is extremely hard to get or very, very limited production that is available but not always on the shelf. The good news is this year that's everything. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And, and the situation with that, though, is that, again, it can't just be like, well, whatever was quote-unquote hot. Like, it's got to right. have the criteria of this deserve. So there's a, a very popular brand that we have called Stallone, which is out of, out of Nicaragua, and we got access to his uh, personal vault of original blends that he crafted before launching his brand. Wow. We have those cigars coming for the society. So stuff like that can't be reproduced, and it's something that we, we all also use this phrase of something that deserves to be smoked. Yeah. And so that will be coming through, and once that pushes through, hopefully more product will be available to open up the society further. So This is what this is the genius of Eric, okay? Because <laughs> And, and truly, one of the things you're doing is you're taking great care of your people in the cigar society. You're also building your relationships with people in factories and helping them out with stuff. I assume that, you know, if 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 the cigar society had all those extra spots and you just signed people up mindlessly and you're like, oh, just get as many people in as we can. Right. You wouldn't be able to be served by some of these guys who are like, yeah, I have a limited run of this. Right. And you're like, right, yeah, right, we right. can we can take all of that and feed all of our people. Right. 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 Like they're, you're building relationships with the factory. You're taking good care of your people. You're sort of helping your business on both ends. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's the I think that's a mindset you've got to have. Like, yeah, how am I going to protect relationships on both sides and make sure that I've got what my people are going to need next month and six months and a year from now. Right, right, definitely, and and with that, uh, the the society is probably one of our lower margin programs that we have, mm. and it's the thing is though, it's it's kind of like I mean, you and I talk about this with retail as well. Is like when you when you have a box of cigars, it's more justified of hey, I want to be able to pass this deal along so they can afford a big box. Right, we'll take a little bit of margin from that. It's a similar type of ideology essentially. Yeah. Um, but it's really that that special experience. It's not about, well, we're just going to move inventory. You know that cigar you saw on the bigger websites out there? Well, we're just going to send you a five-pack and call it good. Right. That's not at all what right. we're about. Right. So. Yeah. Now, one final question for you. I know what what the what value people get from the Cigar is Daily Nation, right? Mm-hmm. We work to make the best damn cigar content online, and we do it for free. And we want to do that in the simple you know opportunity to exchange you guys the best value we can on cigars and the best information. What is the value of Oak Glen Tobacconist for the people who join it, the Cigar Society? Like, what does that look like for people? If in the down the road you're opening up more spots, people mm-hmm. are curious about this. You're talking a lot about limited cigars, about right. the stuff that's right. hard to get within reach. Like, what is it that people come to your society for? It's really, it kind of goes back to when we first opened and what the shop is about. And it's really a community. I mean, as, as a lot of people in the cigar industry talk before, like this is the vehicle for conversation. This is, you can meet on an evil pl- even plane. Uh, you can to- also meet on an evil yeah. plane. <laughs> it's totally within reach. You can meet on an even plane uh, and, and smoke together, it, whether you have a six-figure job, whether you don't, you can do that. And that's what we want to extend to the people that can't physically come to our shop. Yeah. So we do programs at the shop, like we'll do a, a cut and light where we're all smoking the same thing. We do the same thing online. First Thursday of every month, we meet YouTube live, drop down the comments. Sometimes we even send the link out where you can jump on the video itself. We smoke this together, we compare notes, because that's really what it is. And you'll get tons of opinions. Some people absolutely love it. Some people that are like, eh, it's not completely my palate. Right. And with that if you absolutely love it and it's limited, you now have a five pack. You're not, well, I smoked one and it's done. Okay. So you have that resource because a lot of the the education of it is also aging the cigar, watching it come to maturity. 
So, so you're obviously a classy guy. You obviously run a great program. You maxed out your stuff. Where, you know, if you don't have spots available right now, where can people find you on social media? So if you go to uh, OGT Cigars on Instagram, which is where we're most active, mm -hmm. you can also go to our website where you can sign up on our newsletter. You get a 10% off disco uh, discount on your first order. Um, you can kind of join this society there and keep your ear to the ground when those spots open because they will be opening. It'll just take a little while till that happens. Um, yeah. We're also on Facebook and we're also on our YouTube channel. Just look up in YouTube Oakland Tobacconist and that's where you can find it. And guys, you should check out the content there. It's really, Eric has got a lot of wisdom in this stuff. I think obviously very highly of this dude. And if you get a chance, watch this video on CigarsDailyPlus.com. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. And thank you, brother. Thank Thanks you so by. much. It's he drove here from California for this. Well, so because it's worth it. It's, yeah, it's, worth it's it. totally worth you it. And I have to say, yeah. on the same coin, uh, Tim has been a huge mentor to me and a huge inspiration. And the fact that you put up Cigars Daily Plus is genius. Thank you. I Thank wish you. I had the resources for that because it's a phenomenal <laughs> idea. So awesome, awesome job. Yeah, on someday that. Cigars Daily Plus might become the lifeboat for <laughs> yeah, other exactly. channels like yours. Like, so YouTube puts the big stink on all of us and we're like, hey guys, come on over, post your videos here. We can all do something together. But guys, please uh, check this out on Cigars Daily Plus. Drop your comments down below. This is Tim and Eric. We are both signing off for Cigars Daily. See you all in the comments. I don't know who left this here. One of my Sunday night guests left this here and now it's mine. Ah! Oh, good. It was just a one-time thing. <laughs> you got it on film, I'm so right? glad I was recording that. I don't know who left this damn lighter from Cigars Daily Live, but it just lit my hand on fire. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Tim here with Eric Drazen from Oak Glen Tobacconist to take a look at the American Viking Filthy Zebra. Damn it. <laughs> Forgot the name of the cigar as we went into it.